Good morning guys, welcome back to Morgan Hill Farms. It is a very chilly 43 degrees this March morning, but I am late getting my brassicas out this year. Our weather has dipped down into the freezing temperatures over the past couple of nights, so I haven't been able to get these guys out. I wanted to make sure that the weather wasn't gonna be down in the freezing area until these guys had a little bit of time to develop their roots in the soil here in my row. Um, I didn't wanna be worrying that all my hard work was just going to get frozen and dead. Die. But anyways, the temperatures are looking really good now, so I'm gonna try to get these things out. You can see I've already prepped this row. I put a nice layer of compost right on top, um, but I'm gonna amend each hole as I go ahead and plant these guys. So I have about 100 broccoli plants here, and I also have some cauliflower and cabbage up at the house that I just didn't have a hand to bring down. So hopefully one of the kids will see that and uh, bring it down here for me. But we're gonna get started with this broccoli. The first thing I'm gonna start out by doing today is just getting my amendments ready. So I have a bucket here and there is some blood meal in that and I'm gonna make it really easy on myself and I'm gonna add some bone meal to that and just mix it up. And that's what I'm gonna be putting in the holes as I plant my brassicas. So broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage are very heavy feeders. They love a ton of nitrogen, so that's why I have that blood meal there. And then the bone meal was going to give me some phosphorus and calcium. The phosphorus is really going to help these guys get a really good root development so that they can take up all of the nutrients that they need to grow me nice big heads of broccoli and heads of cabbage. Now you're going to see I just put some soil in a five gallon bucket and that is compost. So although my row is already topped with a couple of inches of compost, when I plant these, I actually want to put some compost directly into the holes. That's going to allow my root system of my plants to reach directly into that organic matter. It's going to help to nourish them and it's going to give a really nice growing medium. So the first thing that I do when I'm all set to plant is I will go ahead and dig the holes in my rows. Now my rows are 30 inches wide and about 70 feet long. And when I'm planting, I'm spacing these plants about 10 to 12 inches apart. You could even get away with eight inches if your soil is very, very fertile. Um, what I kind of do is I just imagine how big that full grown plant would be. And that helps to give me my spacing. When I dig my holes, I don't do them directly across from one another in the row. I actually stagger them. And this is gonna let me get more plants in this one row. I think I actually ended up getting about 150 broccoli plants um, with some cauliflower and a few other things in here. Now the varieties that I'm planting out today are specifically bred for heat tolerance. So the first one that I'm planting out is called Monty. Um, now let me just say that all of these plants are just four weeks old. These were started four weeks ago in my house and so now is a really good time to transplant those out. The Monty broccoli will be ready in about 56 days. This one has really good heat tolerance. Um, and it has a large green head. You're not gonna get a lot of side shoots off of this one. Um, the next one is gonna be Green Magic. That's ready in about the same amount of time as the Monty. This one has excellent heat tolerance and is actually meant to be harvested in the summer. So that's fantastic. And then the last one that I'm gonna plant is called Sun King Broccoli. And that one has some good side shoot production. So I'll get a little bit more of a harvest after I get that main head off of the plant. Um, but this one is for summer harvest as well, but you can also grow it in the fall time. You're gonna see here that as I go down this row to place my plants into the hole, that they're all in a 10 by 20 tray. When I start my seedlings inside, I start everything in soil blocks. And I really, really love this method for plants. So soil blocks do not have any type of a container. You basically make a seed starting mix and you add in any amendments and nutrients that you want. And then you can press that soil down with a soil blocker. And that is what I plant directly into for my seeds. Um, I can get 50 soil blocks into one 10 by 20 tray. So it's a super great space saving technique, as well as my plants are always incredibly healthy. I have not 
had better luck any other way than by doing soil blocks. You're gonna see here that it allows my seedlings to have a really amazing root system. And because there is no container, um, those roots are able to air prune. Once they hit the air, um, they'll kind of prune themselves and they will not get root bound. And that is extremely important if you want healthy plants. Do not let your plants get so big that they get root bound um, or do the soil block method like I do here. I never up pot my brassicas. Um, I just simply transplant them out directly from those soil blocks that I have made. When you plant out your brassicas, you're gonna wanna make sure that you plant them slightly deeper than where they were in their container. So you're gonna wanna plant right up to that first leaf that's coming off of the stalk. Um, that's going to help your plant be a little bit more sturdy in the ground. They'll tolerate a great amount of wind. In the springtime, we get really heavy high winds and high rains, um, and these guys always do fine. So just plant up to that first leaf level, and that's gonna be the same for your cabbages as well. If you do end up having a container where you started multiple seeds, um, and you're getting ready to plant that out, you are going to want to make the hard decision to kill some of those other seedlings. You really just want to plant one plant per hole. So you're gonna wanna pinch off those other plants. This has gotta be the hardest part for me because I always feel like I'm wasting food when I do this, but you will not get a harvest off of any plant that is growing right with other plants, I promise you. So just take that step now and you'll have a full head of broccoli instead of three plants that produce nothing. You're gonna see here that I'm going to add in that nice compost directly into the hole as I'm planting these guys and getting them to the right level. Now, brassicas are a little different than other plants. Most plants like really loose, airy soil, but your brassicas don't mind a little bit of compaction. And in fact, compacting that soil down around them slightly is actually going to help prevent some diseases as well as some pest issues that you can run into. So just make sure you're giving a bit of a firm path around those when you get them in in the ground um, now i wouldn't recommend planting these in a hard red packed clay that would be way too hard for them but just a little firmness will go a long way for you and now i'm on to my cabbages so this row wasn't amended so i'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle a bucket of compost on top of that but i'm also going to add some more in the holes here when i get ready to plant them as well as i'm going to add in that nitrogen with the blood meal and the phosphorus with the bone meal. Now the cabbage variety that I'm growing right now is called Early Golden Acres Cabbage and that is ready in 60 days. It's a very fast growing cabbage. It'll give me about a three pound, very firm, compact head. And that is about the only variety of cabbage that I do in the spring and summertime because it is very quick to come to maturity. If I did a longer season brassica, something that takes like 120 days, that's gonna bring me into my hot, hot summer temperatures and brassicas hate the heat. So I grow the majority of my cabbages and broccoli in the fall. Um, this year I am experimenting a little bit with that heat tolerant variety broccolis um, that we spoke about earlier. So we'll see if those give me a good harvest, but the fall time is really when I'm doing the majority of my planting. Now we're in zone 8A, we were in 7B, but they just updated us to 7A. Um, and we are in mid-March here, so we're not gonna get any hard freezes at this point. We may get a frost, um, but I really like to make sure that my seedlings are not going to have too much of a temperature shock after I get them in the garden. They have been hardened off, meaning that they've been sitting up on my porch, but my garden sits a little lower so we can get cooler temperatures in my in-ground garden than I can up at the house. So I just kind of watch the forecast and make sure that we're not gonna get any really hard frosts because that will actually damage your brassicas if they don't have a good root system. Now, after you get everything in the ground, you're gonna wanna make sure to give it a nice watering to really get those seedlings um, rooted into the ground. And you're gonna wanna keep that soil moist really through the whole growing season. The way that um, cabbages specifically grow, they need so much water. Um, if you don't water, you're not gonna get those really tight packed heads. You'll have some looser heads. And what that can actually cause is some fungal and uh, just, you know, not an optimal plant when you cut it open. You might see some little brown areas in there where the air pockets have 
been able to form, but if you make sure just to keep them nice and well watered, you'll go a long way toward having success with your harvest. So we've got some drip irrigation here that Nate installed for me last year, so that's going to help me out so I don't have to be down here every day. Okay guys, so it took me about two hours, but I got 100 broccoli plants in the ground, 25 cauliflower plants, and 25 cabbage plants in the ground. So I'm kind of uh, happy it only took two hours, um, but these guys, I'm just gonna make sure to water them very well. We are expecting rain in the next two days, um, so that's actually gonna work in my favor, um, and it's gonna be relatively cool so that these guys have a bit of time to transition into the garden here. If you guys have any questions or comments, just go ahead and leave those below, but thank you all so much for hanging out with me, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.